Hi, I'm Adrian Thompson. I'm from Image Holders. Um, I'm just going to be talking to you for a few minutes about um, the engagement and use of tablets, the rise of tablets um, in kiosks or enclosures, as we call them. Um, so, what I'd like to do really is just um, begin with looking about talking about the and very much the physical interface. Um, which is what we do. Um, so that, by that, I mean the actual physical product design of um, of the enclosures. So a lot of people talk about um, <clears throat> the user interface, and what we've really recognised um, through the development of our terminals is that a lot of clients don't really, you know, they're constantly talking about user interface. How do we improve this? looking at mobile phones, websites, but when you're actually in this physical retail world or um, client-facing environments, um, you need to get that client to the device um, and it has to be appealing um, for them to actually notice it's there and walk across to it and then engage with it. So that in itself is, uh, you know, is a fairly um, Understa often understated and uh, complex um, thing to do. So there we've got a, <coughs> a terminal in the McDonald's restaurant. Um, <coughs> stand over here so I can get to the mic. Um, and you can see that you've got a bunch of children there who are highly engaged um, in those terminals. So you walk in the restaurant, you can recognize that they're there. Uh, they're easy to use, you don't need any education in order to just go and engage with that product and that product engage from a, a, a three-year-old up to you know, a, a person of any generation, gender, nationality, and they can just get in their notes there and start using it. So <clears throat> what we need to do, to do is like Real back from that and go into what we call device integration, which is really a, a, a term that we've invented. Um, because we didn't know what, what better to call it, frankly, a couple of years ago. So <clears throat> you've got, you want to retain the ability um, to, for your customers to engage with the product, but you need to put, put a bunch of devices in. So you've now got a lot of tablets, particularly like Windows and Android devices. Got lots of USB ports. You've got um, increased connectivity, um, and you've got, and therefore that's giving clients the ability to massively reduce the cost of deployment. So you've got your tablets, also your CPU, so you can shrink down your form factor, and you can start to integrate devices and add functionality that then gives your um, consumer um, greater interaction. So you've got the. Uh, a step of saying, right, what devices do we need? So you've got printers, scanners, uh, swipe readers, card readers, cash acceptors, and then you've got a bunch of different use cases. So we often get a client to come and say, right, we need 200 freestanding units because uh, we've got 200 shops. And then as you speak to them, you realize, or they realize that they actually need maybe 20 freestanding ones, need a bunch of wall mounted ones. Uh, they need some customized ones or they've got a flagship store where they need a selection of different uh, use cases um, and ultimately you end up with um, kind of a specification and a rollout. So what we do is kind of tailor ourselves our ability to react in a, an agile manner to be able to um, meet the customer um, and client demand. So what we've got is, um, <clears throat> uh, it, it's not just about engaging the, uh, the end user or the consumer, you also have to kind of, the client has to be engaged and often you might have software parties, third parties, uh, installation partners and if what we do is complex then it makes life very difficult for all or one of those parties. So it's, it's very much about keeping 
everyone engaged along a process of uh, kind of uh, consultation. So you've got features like simple to install, it's got to be secure, you don't want to have to have a loss of your <coughs> property, you don't want people breaking in and stealing iPads. Um, you bore your senses about the amount of customers who've gone on Amazon, tier one customers, you buy a load of enclosures, put them in, and uh, two days later they've all disappeared. Um, it happens quite a lot. <laughs> um, and then ultimately they have to be easy to use. By easy to use, that means they have to be easy to maintain, got to be easy to install, and then they have to be easy and engaging to use by the consumer, because it's all about the consumer. It's about making the client happy, installation partners happy, software partners happy across that journey. So just gonna, that's an example of an integration kiosk. There's one of these upstairs. Um, that one has a 15-inch uh, terminal. So it's got a nice big interface. Um, so to, again, depending on the use case or the price point, can, it might be driven by a 10-inch cheap Android device that might be the driver. Or if there's more budget, it might be like, right, we need a nice big interface. You might be looking, say, at a library where you, you've got clients who often want larger font sizes or you've got lots of information on there, so you need to make it easy. But you know, you've got a really um, attractive terminal which is drawing people in. You've got the ability to put a graphic in there, move the devices around it if you want so you can put things in the best use case. You've actually got product which we purposely set the devices out so it's like a little smiley face so it kind of helps to draw people in um, and then you've got features like the shelf um, and which seems like an incredibly simple thing but just adding that means that you know you you're in a consumer environment you like uh, your clients are walking up, or the consumers walking up, and they might have coffee, or they've certainly got a mobile phone. You might actually have to get the phone out, something out of the pocket, the receipt to scan, um, a loyalty token, something like that. So just having the shelf there, you'll find that the use case and the, um, goes up just on a simple thing like that. So they, they lean against it, they feel more comfortable, stick their elbow on it, put the water down. Put the phone down while they're using it. And the other, another feature that we found is that it actually helps encourage maybe two or three people to engage in the terminal at a, at a time. Whereas when you take that away, you know you feel a bit more exposed. It's a, so there's, a, there's various levels of, sort of psychology um, that, that go into quite a lot of our products. Um, <clears throat> So then you've got things like um, you know, the use case, what, do, what, what does the client want? So the client wants kind of um, obviously um, a proven use case, they want to um, improve service or get more money or get more customers or reduce um, cost. Um, There's a host of things that you, want, that you guys want to achieve. So often it's like pushing the form factor down. So you've got things like this where you've got the 2D scanner on a um, head, so again, that's like shrinking down effectively um, into a very small kiosk or terminal. Um, you've got wall mounted solutions there that can be used in access control, or, um, and again, just like driving, driving the cost and the, the space out of things. So a lot of retail environments are very um, expensive per square foot. So do you need to put a freestanding terminal in? you need a floor box when you can just have something on the wall? You might have a battery pack there because you don't want to bring power to it to boost the tablet's life and just have it charged on a daily basis. So there's you know, um, an unbelievable, uh, never-ending cascade of specifications and requests that can be uh, used and integrated into uh, the solutions that we achieve. Do a lot of other things than just the big, bigger kiosk solutions. You got a lot of um, there's a massive push now to integrate loyalty, which is uh, you know it's, you've got this big data, so you can like really understand that your 
customer actually wants a hot chocolate and not a coffee. Um, and, you know, I don't want, to, don't want a coffee. Um, so, just move on there. So, we started to develop these type of what we call compact terminals uh, or com compact kiosks. Um, and this is a really combination of uh, you know, taking the just the tablet terminal and integrating a whole host of uh, devices. So these are really starting to some proven use cases. We've got these in uh, several betting operators around the country. Um, there's one upstairs on the star stand. If you've seen that, um, but there's a proven use case, and again, that you know proven customer engagement and integrating these things into furniture so that they can be um, they can drive down cost and improve installation work across like partnerships with again the uh, uh, software providers the installers so that you can really just sort of tailor everything out um, and uh, make it as an end-to-end -end process which is literally as simple as possible and then you know just so I'll put this in um, at the end. So we've got uh, you know, scalable, um, more future-proof solutions. So we're looking at different types of tablet. Um, so you've got different interfaces, different sizes. Um, you might want, so when, as this is flashing there, the green lines are printers. So they might have an NFC or contactless, contactless payment in there. So it's kind of where are we now? Where are we going and how do we get there? So you know, in, a few, in a few years' time, customers not, might not need printers, might need more printers. So we're trying to kind of just modularize the design so we can scale up. And there's, there's, there'll be other devices and we don't know what they are yet. You know, there's a lot of people talking about like finger vein reading. So you can actually take a 3D scan of your, of your finger, which is effectively the ultimate level of tokenization. So your finger, becomes your credit card, your loyalty card, debit card, everything, because that's encrypted to you. Um, and if that happened, then you only need to do is stick your finger in. So we put a hole with the finger <laughs> in really, really, um, and it emails you a receipt. Um, you might not even have email. So you've got, um, you know, you can't predict the future, but you can kind of plan and adapt for it and uh, allow things to sort of shrink down and sort of, uh, run across um, an array of uh, possibilities. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So, any questions? Yeah? yeah? Just in terms of uh, future proofing. Yeah, we can. So what we do is we have a what we call a, a, um, a tray system. So it's a system. It was the first feature that we really integrated um, when we started about three years ago, um, and. Um, we patented that, so you basically got a cassette that fits in uh, the tablet. We built um, around a, an assumption that so you can have a 10.1 enclosure. So the largest tablet, which is called 10 inch, is 10.1 inches, um, and then you would assume a size for the USB cables around that. So as the like the McDonald's example I showed you at the beginning. Um, has now gone the same enclosure as housed a tab four, tab eight, and now with tab A, A, A or something like that, whatever the new one is, and they all fit. You can put, uh, you could switch from an iPad to a Samsung tablet, or Windows tablet, um, and you just put it. Just, you just uh, put a different tray, so it's like it's very cheap and easy. And again, they're designed so that the you know, it's so simple to use that the shop staff can actually make the changes. So you don't have to have call-outs. Um, even our large terminals just have thumbs. You've got a key. When you open it up, you have a thumb screw inside. 
to you know, the, uh, the stuff. You know, the, the most anyone has to do is unhook a USB, and put some thumb, thumb screws <laughs> back in place to hold the devices securely in place. And if you want to retrofit devices, um, that's fairly easy. You have like, a very facade on the front, and you just put, slide that out, and you just put a new one in with the apertures for the cache acceptor or the printer in the appropriate place. Now, that, the same principle goes right through from a 7 inch up to 22. Sorry, though, I think there was a couple more questions. Yeah? Do you think uh, satellite sites are going to be enough to, to kind of Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the um, the, the betting operators, so you got like Paddy Power, Coral Lab Brooks, they're highly abusive environments. Um, you know, there's people going in there and smashing screens. And so, uh, you know, some of the restaurants uh, can be uh, quite abusive, abusive environments, especially if they're like fast food places on a Saturday night. Uh, people will go into the, some of these environments and abuse terminals and try to either steal things or um, so you know there's absolute proven use cases about this, the levels of security I mean often speak about security I don't, I don't feel it's that relevant but these things are all made of um, carbon steel uh, pressed sort of very strong very robust units yeah. So it was a bit about the operating system. Is there an operating system coming? No, no, there are. So I mean, mainly it's either iOS, uh, Windows, or Android. So when we first started, there was a you know, probably eight percent of the inquiries were around iOS. Lots of customers trying to make things work with iOS and then starting to try to integrate devices around iOS. But Apple have a lot of rules about that. It's very difficult to do. Um, and as the Windows tablets start to come, so things like Surface Pro 4, which is a 12-inch tablet, um, with the Pro, Surface Pro range, and then you've got other tablets like the Lynx range, which have got USB ports, makes it incredibly easy to integrate. Also put a lot of all-in-one um, tablets in, so a lot of the 15, 18, 20 plus uh, units we do, we've got actually either an all-in-one uh, device in them or they've got a touch screen with a small CPU sitting behind it. Um, again, that's quite simple and straightforward to do. Um, you know, it doesn't, you know, why make something complex if it doesn't have to be complex as we, we think? But there's a huge uptake on Windows and Android. And that's really because it's very, one, it's cheaper, um, and two, it's much more simple to integrate devices around. You can ask a question? I thought you. Yeah. Is that it? No more? Thank you very much. Thank you.